question. Right, firstly, good morning. Still good morning, everyone. And thanks for everybody come to join us this morning. Um, it is sunny in my side, hopefully it's sunny in your side. <laughs> so it will be a very, very interesting session today. And right, firstly, right, uh, I'd just like to explain that this week um, at Career Center, we run quite a lot of uh, abduction events for you all. So hopefully you've been all kind of uh, been to some of them or all of them and Hopefully that you find it very interesting and very useful. Uh, if not, don't worry. Uh, we all the sessions we have a recording as well. So I'm going to put the link in the chat in a minute. So if you miss it, not to worry at all, and you still can kind of go back. Um, actually, so uh, let's quick quick go through today's uh, agenda event, and I pass it to Natalie. I won't block you too much time. So today's topic, right? And um, primary, uh, the, the, the workshop title is pre-interview workshop. And then so Natalie will be going through uh, kind of like an interview preparing uh, top tips and also the onboarding in the hybrid uh, work, which is probably is very, very popular and very common in most of the organization uh, nowadays. So and um, also just to have a quick brief is the and the section itself today, it will be a very interactive one. So feel free to switch on your camera camera like us or the use your microphone or just put your question in the chat and then so everybody can kind of have more sharing, learning, um, kind of like we, we like to learn a lot from Natalie today, but also let's share all our idea and kind of what we think as well, yeah? So today, uh, our main, uh, our guest speaker will be uh, Natalie Walkers from uh, Gilbert Miha. So actually, um, so I'm going to pass it on to Natalie, and Natalie's got a very kind of strong experience, more than 14 years experience in recruitment background, and also she's a specialist, you know, in all kind of like a interview preparation. So uh, let's welcome Natalie to join us and, and pass it on to Natalie. Thank you very much, Natalie. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anita. Um, morning, everybody. Thank you so much for attending um, today. I'm really keen to kind of go through um, quite a detailed um, insight into kind of tips and techniques around um, interviews and how you can best prepare for these. So yeah, there's some some good slides and content, but certainly if there's any questions, like Anita said, if you want to put them in the chat, um, we want it to be quite interactive, um, but definitely at the end there, we'll, we'll go through anything that we've sort of missed throughout, or if there's things that can wait until the end, of course, we can just catch up on everything then. Um, so yeah, just to introduce myself, I am the Talent and Development Director here at Gilbert Mayer. Um, and as Anita said, I've got um, yeah 14 years experience in recruitment, um, and I'm this topic today. To be honest, I'm I'm super passionate about for so many reasons because I've organised so many interviews over my career for um, professionals or even early year, um, early career professionals, graduates, all different levels of individuals. But I think I don't think it matters what level you are. I feel like it always is useful to have kind of you know some tips techniques um but i do feel super passionate about kind of the grad community particularly on the back of the pandemic and um you know everything's kind of went digital i think the, the lack of people contact over the last two years will have impacted some individuals and i've been interviewing here at gilbert mayer for our graduate academy which starts this summer at the end of august and it's kind of been apparent that actually some really good candidates coming through, but it's been a shame um, to see there's been a, a little bit of a lack of confidence amongst them and which I completely understand. So I feel really passionate that I want to help empower you ahead of kind of securing that all important um, job in the commercial world or, or whatever sector you go into. So yeah, today we're going to go through kind of tips on how to prepare um, for those interviews and actually talking through kind of the reality of, you know, what can occur in an interview. But I think for me, what I'm super passionate about is the whole kind of fail to prepare, prepare to fail um, ethos. I think in life, um, in anything you do, you know, you've 
if you put the preparation and the time in, um, it really helps, first of all, eliminate kind of those nerves um, because it is nerve wracking. You know, I think, again, for anybody, it, it really doesn't matter what level you are. I think, you know, being in the spotlight and being asked lots of questions can be really quite unnerving for people. But I genuinely think if you're prepared and you go through kind of that research, um, revision, rehearse, which is kind of the three R's that we're going to talk about today, it will just put you at ease and, and ensure that you go into that um, format, um, you know, with the most confident kind of mindset, really. So, yeah, mindset, I think, is a really good first thing to kind of talk about. And that's one thing I'm, I'm always, you know, keen to kind of um, get across to anybody. You know, the, the interview is a two way thing. So as much as you are going to be interviewed by um, these employers, just consider the fact that you know you shouldn't have to feel subservient to them yes you need to impress them but ultimately you want to go in feeling that you know actually is this opportunity right for me because it's that's what an interview is about you could be applying for jobs online all day long and of course you don't know until you step into that environment kind of what that culture feels like kind of what the reality of of that role looks like and and do you want to work for these people ultimately you might go for an interview and and actually sit there and think I'm not sure I'm gelling with this director or, or manager um, and in actual fact that's okay you know it can't always be a match made in heaven every time but I do think um, just going in with the mindset of you know it is a two-way thing it's as much for you to find your career and what's right for you um, you might not necessarily go into, you know, the first job that you accept. I totally appreciate it might not be the job for life. You know, um, I don't think there's such thing as the job for life now. I think people do sort of move around a little bit more. It will be perfect if you guys can walk out of your degrees into an ideal opportunity. But don't put too much pressure on that is what I would say. You know, yes, it's got to be right. You want to go into a, a good environment where you're going to get a lot out of it um but ultimately um don't feel it has to be the perfect role i would think of things over a kind of you know the next three years at this point would be my advice try not to think gosh you know i need to find the absolute perfect job because any skills that you gain in the next two to three four years are going to really be the making of your career um over the long term um, and also one thing I, I did want to say was um, obviously before any interview, you know, you need the right CV. Now, I know today is about kind of tips and tricks around interviews. Um, so we won't talk uh, around that CV piece. But what I wanted to say to you was I've got a really compelling kind of CV template that um, I would happily share with anybody following today. If you felt you wanted, you know, a format that um was really slick and concise then drop me a line after um i'm sure we can pass on my details and you can um you know i'm happy to send that information over because the cv is ultimately what's going to get you the interview you know so you do need a really compelling cv then i'm happy to take a look at anybody's cvs but yeah let's talk about the interview side of things so just knowing your worth you know knowing the degree that you've done um whether it be that you're not going into a career, you've decided actually it's been great learning around this topic and I've gained a lot from it. I think you've got to believe in yourself first and foremost, even if you do want to kind of change the direction from kind of what you've been studying, that's OK. Um, it's just really considering how you get that across the interview and why that change has happened. I was speaking to one of my colleagues, um, Hannah, um, just yesterday, actually, and she asked why this individual was kind of not wanting to go down the fashion route. Um, and their reason for that was just um, that actually they feel that they want to go into a commercial role. Actually, fashion for, the, for them isn't as ethical as they thought it would be. And they've learned a lot from it, but it was fine. I'm happy to interview that individual based on the fact that they kind of, you know, demonstrated what they want and they've justified why, yeah, it's been great to learn about this, but actually in doing so, I've realised it's probably not the career path for me. So that's OK, is what I would say. Don't feel panicked around, gosh, I'm actually deviating from my degree. You're probably not deviating as much as you think because you will have gained so much from that that you can really bring to an organisation. Um, so. Going back to the mindset, you know, just be confident, believe in yourself and really remember you've just been through really quite unprecedented times, you know, um, 
your resilience will be stronger than many um, individuals who've graduated previously on the basis that, you know, um, we were all thrown a curveball, I know, but ultimately, you know, a lot of you started a degree, you know, you were on campus and then the world sort of turned upside down and you, you've got to remember that's been challenging for you, but that's a good talking point for everybody, you know, because we've all got our own stories to tell this. So it's a good common ground, but just remember that you will have built a lot of resilience around that. Um, so yeah, they're kind of the key things around that mindset, really just believe in your worth. And to do that, you might want to kind of do an online um, personality profiling, which I think is a really good way to prepare for kind of that job search um, and just knowing kind of what your skills are. So again, I can send this afterwards, but there's um, a personality psychometric test that you can get online called 16 personalities. It literally takes kind of 15 minutes and it presents a really good report um, and it will give you kind of a category of who you are, but also it breaks it down in terms of um, different things such as your um, assertiveness versus your turbulence, your learning styles, how you build relationships. And it's got lots of information which will actually, um, I guess, give you that kind of reassurance that, yes, this is the, the route I want to go down and why and these are my skills and this is why my personality would be suited to this industry um, and those techniques I think are really good just to give yourself that kind of self-belief. Um, so another thing that I think is really important as we go into kind of that preparation for an interview so this is kind of before you've even been invited for an interview these sort of top tips that I would share is do the personality profiling and check your um, social media um, your LinkedIn first of all is really slick and you know you've got a good image on there that looks professional you know um it is a professional platform ultimately and it is treated as an online cv i know as soon as i get a good candidate cv through for us here at gilbert mayor the first thing i will often do is go on in fact it is the the first thing i do i'll look at the cv yep yeah, they look great sounds of interest let's jump on the the linkedin profile um and if it's sort of, you know it's great if it marries up with the cv because ultimately linkedin is really an online CV now and uh, and that's going to be the future I think um, for how we all operate in the, in the job market um, so definitely make sure your your LinkedIn is up to date it's got a good bio about you a personal profile I think that just offers a little bit more um, ahead of the interview um, so social media in general definitely having a look at your Facebook, Instagram, making sure they're private ahead of any job search or, you know, you just don't want anything to kind of put that potential employer off. Um, so just be careful around those things, I would say, because, again, um, a lot of employers will kind of just Google the name and you'll come up on LinkedIn, Instagram. Often people aren't always private and that's OK if you're not private, but it's just considering you know, the tone that you're setting from a more informal platform, you know, versus what you're sort of saying on your CV and your um, LinkedIn. So that's just a couple of things that I think are really key. Um, and then upon being invited for an interview, I think, again, it's that kind of shock where I'm speaking to candidates again for us because we're recruiting for our graduate academy here, which I can tell you a little bit more about at the end. Um, but often you'll phone people and they'll sort of answer and they'll sound a little bit hassled or actually now's not a good time. Um, but I think it's always worth just step trying to step away from that situation when somebody phones you um, for a job, you know, regarding a job application. Um, if you genuinely can't speak, I think professionally sort of getting that across is absolutely no issues, you know, and just saying, actually, I'm just, you know, I haven't got great signal at the moment. Is it OK if I give you a call back in the next half an hour or whatever? Show you're interested as opposed to kind of um, the interview really does start at this stage, by the way, you know, it is one thing I will say. It's not always about kind of once you walk in the door of that that organisation, it really does start at the, the point where um, the company phone you and often um, I've answered or people have answered a call to me and said oh I'm not sure which job it is I've applied for hundreds or I've applied for loads I have no idea but I think you really should kind of have a better idea and if you genuinely have applied for lots of jobs you've kind of got to ask yourself why you're applying for all of these jobs and I think that kind of really the message from me there would be to sit in and draw up kind of what's important to you it's not about applying for anything and everything don't panic you can be quite considered about what you're applying for 
but if you are applying for anything and everything for whatever reason um i wouldn't let that known um at that point because i think what you want to be doing is really coming across professional that you're interested in that particular opportunity oh yeah gilbert mayor you know of course i applied for you yesterday um the company sound great actually to be honest now isn't a great time but if i could just give you a call back in the next hour is that okay that's as simple as that you know um but be aware that whilst you're in this job market if there are phone numbers coming through that you don't recognize chances are it is potentially your next employer so just really taking that into consideration um and at the point where the business do invite you for an interview um say at the end of that phone call I would always ask kind of what the format for the interview would be because employers can sometimes be a little bit rushed there so they might have a good chat with you and go great let's get you booked in to come and see us in the next couple of days but you can't prepare fully for something if you don't know what the format is and again um, it just shows your kind of confidence your assertiveness that professionalism and how considered you are by just simply saying great yeah I can do this time um, could you just outline a little bit more detail about the format and is there anything I need to prepare it shows how conscientious you are if nothing else and I can sometimes feel I can feel myself rushing because I'm heading into another meeting and I just want to get this candidate booked in but it always reminds me you know and impresses me when somebody says yeah could I know the format I think of course you need to know the format um because often that won't be laid out to you and I think it helps you go into that interview setting feeling really at ease again it helps with those nerves um the more you're prepared the better you're going to feel about that interview so next we have um the pre-interview, how to prepare, a little bit more on this topic um, here. Um, the key thing I think is to remember that, yes, the interview starts at the point where you've taken that phone call, but ultimately remembering when you go into that environment, it's really important. Those first impressions are coming across um, to anybody that greets and meets you in, the, in that business. But before we get to that, there's quite a, little, a, a bit of work we need to do before we actually get to the actual interview when we're on site with your potential new employer. Um, so what you really want to focus on is kind of doing a little bit of a dummy run. You know, where is this business? Where are they located? Um, having a look at how far they are, what the bus routes look like, you know, um, going out there over the weekend, just even with a friend, just kind of going, you know, for a little drive out, it will really help put, you know, your nerves at ease again. Um, and on the day, it just means everything's a lot slicker um, for you. So consider the location, really, really important. Um, don't just agree to an interview that, you know, eventually it's going to wear you down by traveling that far. Um, really think about that and the reality of the times um you know that you're hitting kind of that traffic you might go on a saturday morning and it take you 10 minutes it, it may be double or triple that on a monday so just really factoring all of those things in so if your interviews at peak time on a monday you know thinking that you'll need maybe an hour to get there um i would always say plan to arrive around sort of 10 minutes early for an interview you don't want to be there kind of way before um you know it's 10 minutes is always polite um i think anything um close to, too close to the bone can make it appear that you've not prepared and actually if anything if nothing else it will make you feel sort of flustered and hassled and you're not going to be in the best sort of frame of mind if that's the case so get to if it's in leeds get to town early half an hour early go and get yourself a coffee and then head on down um to the location so in terms of um you know preparation that you can do ahead of time the research piece is really important and that's not just kind of researching um the company um it that is obviously super super important and i think it's the biggest fail um that i will come across week to week and I, i'm interviewing probably on average about um six graduates a week at the moment and often um i would say maybe half of those are just not preparing they don't know about the company um and actually often they will know about they may know about the company but they've not researched the job both are equally important and i always say this i think if you are um you know booking a holiday or you're buying a new car or, or whatever you spend days weeks researching these things um but it's it really sort of 
surprises me that people don't research that career for themselves, which straight away tells me that it's probably that it's not that important to them. It, you know, it's maybe that they're not as passionate about us. We as employers want people to to be invested in the business. Um, if we're passionate about what we do and who we are, we want like minded people to come on board with that. And there's a lot that can stand out for you as candidates in this process from demonstrating that research um, piece first. So you can research companies now via you know, LinkedIn being the obvious place, place go on their LinkedIn pages. Um, have a look at the posts that they've put out recently, you know, make um, a comment around that in the interview. It, it's just really impressive. It doesn't just have to be the obvious going onto the website, looking at the about us spiel and, you know, reciting that for the interview. Um, that's fine. Don't get me wrong, but you kind of want to be a bit different, you know, and and show that you've dug a bit deeper. You've not just kind of researched the surface level of that business. You've actually taken the time to really look at kind of the Instagram pages, got a feel for the culture, the people that are there, the vision, the values. These things will be listed on companies websites. If they've got a sister company, have a look at that. Um, have a look at Glassdoor. Um, I don't know if you've heard of Glassdoor, but it's a really great place where, um, you know, employees will put reviews about the companies they've worked for previously or, or where they're working currently. That really does give you a, a you know, a really telling insight into um, the culture of a business because often you will find, unfortunately, businesses will really position that proposition as like, we're the greatest, you know. Um, and it can it can be the case that it's not always the truth, you know. So just have a look on Glassdoor because that will give you an insight into, you know, okay, it might be 8.30 till 5 o'clock are the hours, but you'll find on Glassdoor somebody who's a bit disgruntled or maybe five or ten people who've worked there previously have then put, actually, these aren't the hours at all. The expectation is X and Y. Um, so really just taking the time to look over the Glassdoor. Um, yeah, websites, LinkedIn and social media pages, um, because, you know, the, this, this information is at your fingertips. And I think, you know, if you think back years ago, you literally would get an invite to an interview and the best you could do is ask for a company brochure to be sent in the post beforehand. Um, so why somebody wouldn't prepare by clicking on social media um, or, or websites is beyond me personally, but unfortunately is the failing of that candidate interview um it's really important that you do that don't try and wing it it it, it won't serve you well at all um so also before the interview really think about what's important to you as a candidate you know it might be that the values of a business are really important and if that's the case ask the questions around that get that across you know really talk how passionately you, you are about a culture um if it's that you know you need more information about the role ahead of you going for that opportunity you can always phone the company beforehand and, and ask those questions again it makes you stand out um from the competition by showing that preparation i had a candidate on interview um this week and you know within sort of five minutes we knew there'd been no preparation about us as a business and you know in some ways I felt a bit sorry for him because I thought you've really wasted this opportunity but on the flip side it was kind of a waste of our time because we've given you our availability we felt your in your CV looked great we've done a telephone interview and unfortunately you know um that individual who was just not prepared at all it really came across um not just from the knowledge that they had about us or the lack of knowledge about us as a business um i think it really came across in how nervous they were actually um so just just remembering that and another um example which actually is quite comical but shouldn't be but um i had a candidate who had had five days notice on an interview and it was on a monday morning um and I'd emailed them on the Friday just to check they were all OK for the Monday. I hadn't actually heard back, so it kind of made me question whether they were going to arrive or not, which I think if a, employer, a potential employer texts you or phones you just to say, just checking you have got my email from a few days ago, actually, you probably shouldn't have, they shouldn't have to do that. If you get an email confirmation about the interview, it is always polite just to respond to say, yeah, really looking forward to coming along, you know. 
Um, these little things will really impress that potential employer um, ahead of the interview. But this um, individual arrived, um, phoned me frantically on Monday morning, said, I don't know where you are. I'm, I'm in Leeds. I can't find the office. So straight away, I knew they'd not done the dummy run, which is fine. It's not a deal breaker, but they, they turned up late then. And of course, straight away, um, they're on the back foot because they are uh, feeling frantic. You know, it took a while for them to settle down. It had obviously unnerved them. And then asking around kind of what they what research they'd done about the business. Um, unfortunately, I hadn't. What happened after this was that they'd um, been, I think they'd left their car somewhere in Leeds City Centre where um, they'd received a parking fine, you know, and you don't want that either. Ultimately, that's a pretty bad day for an individual, you know, if they've come in and then got a parking fine, but it's all because the preparation was lacking in the beginning. So they've lost out on the opportunity. They've left their car in a random place because it was all very frantic um, and then admitted after that they hadn't you know prepared at all and it's just something that I feel super super passionate about so fail to prepare prepare to fail um, is what I would say but definitely write down any questions that you have ahead of the interview um, actually write it down in a pad take the pad with you to the interview the things that you want to take to an interview are your CV um, a pad with the questions that you want to find out because it shows how organized you are, how well thought out you are. You know, you really shouldn't have to remember everything at interview. You're already quite nervous. You know, we've, we've done all this preparation ahead of the interview to make sure we're feeling at ease. We know where we're going. We've researched the company. You've got your outfit sorted, hang it out the night before, you know, and then you get your pad, your pen, your CV, take all of this to the interview and then any proof of any kind of um, academic achievements or, or anything else I think is really key. Um, we've been interviewing for and still are for a graduate marketing executive role and it's been really great to see some individuals just take that proactive approach at that first stage interview by actually bringing um, their portfolios. We tend to ask for that at the second stage interview, but actually it helps them stand out from the competition, you know, so when you're seeing four or five people and three have brought some sort of portfolio just off their own back, the other two haven't, again, it's not the deciding factor, but it really does help you kind of remember those individuals and, and you want to get that, you know, across, you want to um, set the bar really that you, you know, you're super passionate about that business. Um, so those are the key things to take with you, pad, pen, um, make notes in the interview. Don't be afraid to kind of jot a couple of things down. Again, it shows how organized you are. It tells me as a potential employer that this person, you know, who's going to be involved uh, in my training academy is actually coming in with a pad and a pen because believe it or not, people don't. And, you, you know, um, I don't know how people retain information without that, but at the same time, you may, you may be able to retain all of that information, but it's just demonstrating kind of, you know, um, a little bit more organisation and it stands out and you want to stand out, you know. Um, I guess another pet peeve really is just when you enter the building um, on the day of the interview, um, so you, you're on time or you're ahead of time, you feel at ease, you're ready, you feel confident, you're fully prepared and you've got your questions. Um, again, I think a bit of a, a fail can be that people will sit in that reception area and think they're not being watched. And in actual fact, you know, um, it's really important you're not sat on your phone. Um, I know literally they are like our limbs nowadays, but really do consider kind of the people around you. And um, the interview starts when you enter that building. It doesn't you know, begin when you walk into the meeting room. There are other employers or your potential colleagues. Um, so eye contact, you know, um, always being super polite is really important. Um, and then if there's any kind of material in, in that kind of waiting area, that might be um, informational magazines about the business, just have a flick through. Um, you know, it might just give you a little bit more insight as you're going into that interview, um, or it might just be something you want to comment on in the interview, which just really, again, sets you apart from other people, demonstrates how conscientious and well thought out you are. Um, so that's a really 
top tip ahead of the interview. So um, hopefully that'll help you in your preparation. So we've done the research and that's, you know, something that is absolutely key to the success at the interview. And then um, the revision piece is ahead of the interview, I would say, maybe do a little bit of a uh, dummy kind of mock up with a friend or a bit of role play or family member. Um, just run the questions past them. So, you know, what do you think of this? Do you think this is a good question? This is what I, how I intend or this is what I intend to wear or just get, you know, a little bit of reassurance if you need it. Um, you've got to think, you know, family members, parents, they will have been through many interviews in their time, you know, so um, they're going to be best placed to really help you with um, some tips and techniques. And I think we're always going to feel more comfortable in that setting where you're kind of running something past a friend or family or a housemate. Um, so revise um, is really, really important, I think, just to, again, help put you at ease ahead of the interview. Um, so let's go on to kind of things to remember um, within the interview. So I would say um, putting the emphasis on kind of what's really important to you within that setting. So we're we're in the interview. You may be interviewed by two individuals, um, a director and a potential line manager within that organisation. So remembering kind of um, the your eye contact is really, really important. The body language piece is super important. And sometimes, you know, you will feel a little bit unnerved or you, it's hard to know kind of what questions are coming. Um, there are some questions that you can really prepare for ahead of time. So I would always consider, you know, things going into an interview, you will always be asked and it could be in different formation it might be asked in various different ways but they want to know some key things like you know your achievements what's been your biggest achievement today and obviously that could be an academic achievement it could be a sporting achievement it could be personal it, it could be anything but if you've always got that in your sort of back pocket ready to kind of pull out in any interview setting you know that's a key thing that any employer is going to want to know. They're probably going to want to know how you've overcome a difficult situation before. So um, ahead of time, think about this, rehearse it in your head. What do you want to say? And just remember to really get this across at interview. Um, that difficult situation, again, could be academic. Um, it could be personal. It, it, you know, nobody's expecting... Um, you to have loads of work experience at this stage. Great if you have, you may have worked part time um, throughout education. You might have had some, um, you know, work experience internships. Brilliant. Don't worry if you haven't. There are enough life experiences, I think, to be able to offer something up. Um, so really think about kind of what your, you know, um, what challenges you face, what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses. They are kind of the cliche questions that come up um, and not every company will will ask this, but I do believe that um, in one way or another, they will kind of ask it in a roundabout way. So they might not directly say what's your strength and what's your weakness, but they're going to want to know. Um, and a weakness, you know, always consider putting it putting a bit of a spin on on a weakness. So if it's that you're, you know, um, somebody who's um, really conscientious, you know, it could be that that sort of slows you down a little bit and you're aware of that. But, you know, this is what platform I'm using to kind of help with proofreading a document or, you know, I'm using Grammarly, which is really going to help me speed up that. So I'm trying to kind of improve on that. Or it might be that you're somebody who's quite impatient. So that could be a weakness, but spun into a positive um, because it means, you know, you'll approach tasks in, you know, a very sort of proactive way um because you want things done um so just have a look google these things uh, you know just to help you put a bit of context behind them there's so much information online that you can get but strengths weaknesses challenges that you've overcome um achievements you know biggest achievement today and i would always try and answer a question if if it's not asked in a competency way so for example some employers might say to you we're going to ask you competency-based questions, which um, if you're unaware of what they mean, again, 
um, have a little Google, but just to give you a bit of context on that, that is where um, they will want to know specific examples about, you know, um, a scenario based question. So tell me about a difficult situation that you've overcome in your career um, or within, uh, you know, what's been your biggest uh, challenge you face to date. They're not just going to want to want a one word answer, you know, or a short response. Actually, that's where if it's asked in that way, they're going to want an example and quite a detailed one. You don't want to digress too much either. Keep things quite concise and on point. Um, but the star formula, um, something to have a look at online. Um, star um, is where you really, it's a formula that helps you answer a question at interview and, and really breaks it down from a situation um, to a task. So you need to kind of think about a story having a beginning, middle and an end. Um, and that's probably um, you know, something you want to consider when you're answering a question like uh, biggest achievement. So you don't want to go sort of waffling on, but you do want to give enough context and what the outcome of that situation was um, is often what people uh, are going to want to hear. Something to also remember at interview is um, when you're talking about a task that you've undertaken or a project or maybe your dissertation, you want to give you know some context behind um, behind that. It's a, something I often ask um, graduates, you know, what was their dissertation on or what projects have you um, recently completed? Um, I would always, um, you know, get, again, go into the detail of that, get passionate about kind of what you've done and um, talk about what the outcome of that has been. You might not have your results yet. I know they're sort of coming for everybody. Um, but what you are predicted on that, you know, is just going to really add some um, substance to kind of what you're trying to say. Um, so I think that's something to really get across at the interview, um, at the interview stage as well. So you've prepared for what questions you might be asked. So not only have you pre pre prepared questions for them, you have prepared uh, for questions that you, you know, the common questions that are likely to come up at that interview. Um, so within the interview, again, um, you know, I would always try and um, get across what you know about that business. So even if they don't ask you and you've done all this research before the interview, I think there's nothing more disappointing than actually some employers aren't always the best at interviewing. So you might be going into a situation thinking, oh, my gosh, I'm going to get eaten alive. You're not, by the way, at all. But if you are going in with that mindset, actually, you'll be surprised as you go for more interviews. Um, some people aren't the best at interviewing. So that's where you'll sometimes feel a bit empowered that you're you've got the opportunity to kind of really get across who you are because you're not being thrown a load of questions, you know. But you still, even if there isn't a great format to this interview or the structure's a little bit disjointed, I would try and take the lead in a subtle way on that and get across who you are, what you're about, but really keeping things on point with tangible skills, you know, um, what you believe your skills to be at this stage, you know, and what you feel passionate about. And actually, I've completed an online personality profiling. And these are, the, you know, the things that came out from that, which was really um, interesting and enlightening because it's definitely fitting with who I am. So trying to back everything up with some proof or evidence is is a really good way to kind of get yourself across at the interview. And if they don't ask about what research you've done, just say, and actually, I noticed you've done this charity event a couple of weeks ago that looked incredible. Um, you know, I was really impressed by that. Take the opportunity to showcase what you've done. Don't, again, feel subservient to the interviewer, even if they got they might well have a structure and a format and they just forget to ask you. I, I personally don't know why you wouldn't ask what research somebody has done, but if they do forget to ask you um, and you've done all that research, please get it across because, again, it highlights just how much work you've put in. And it, it's all about setting yourself apart from competition or, or other candidates that are in the running. Um, so I think another thing that I'm really passionate about when it comes to kind of the interview process itself is um, at the end of any given interview, it's really important that you 
you know, if you are keen to progress to the next stage or you're keen on the opportunity, so it might be a two stage interview, you, you might not know what the format or process is. Definitely ask at the end of the interview, you know, is this kind of what's the next stage from here? Um, and I would also, you know, if it is that it's a final stage interview, it doesn't matter if it's a first stage or a final stage, express your interest because I've often deliberated over candidates in the past where I've sat and thought, shall I go with candidate A or candidate B? Um, I'm not sure which one, they're both equally as good. You know, they really fit the culture and values of who we are there. They've got the skills, we're gonna train and develop them. Um, we feel that they're gonna, you know, be an asset to this organization. And you can often be on the fence, you know, and, and there's not always a, enough opportunity to take on two people at once or resource to do that. So the, the deciding factor is often, well, how passionate were they about us? And that's why it's always, always worth closing the interview. It shows your, you know, how assertive you are. It shows how, you know, um, professional you are. It shows that you're, you know, not sort of playing the game to, to be cool and, and think, well, I, I don't want to show my cards too soon. Actually, I think that's what you should be doing. Because if you say, I'm so impressed by everything, you know, I'm really passionate about this opportunity. I, I would absolutely accept this job if offered. And your candidate A and, and candidate B has kind of gone out a little bit casual, like, yeah, great, lovely to meet with you, thanks. And no kind of close on that opportunity. It's an obvious choice for me, you know. So it's just a really important technique that um, I think is well worth saying at the end of any interview and if it is that you know what's the next stage again if there is a second interview what's the format for that second interview um so i can do some preparation in the meantime and again showcasing how conscientious and passionate you are about that opportunity um so yeah and if you don't have you know the um you know if you don't have the academic achievements and you're not sure at this stage what you want to do in terms of career you know the academic achievements that you hoped for or you're not sure what you want to do kind of long-term career wise to be honest i would that's when it is worth just going for a few different interviews i don't think there's any harm in kind of having a look around and, and testing a few different things you know still do all the same amount of preparation show and demonstrate how you know capable and passionate you are um but remember you know you want to go and see if this opportunity is right for you and it, it's hard coming out of any sort of well certainly education not with that you know you've probably got peers and friends of yours that are thinking yeah you know that's clear for me I'm going to do this I'm going into this grad program and this is definitely the route for me um it takes time you know to figure out who you are what you want to be and, and where you want to go the best thing you can do at this point is go to a few different interviews because actually um it's it's practice it, it's practice and the more interviews you do go for um you know the less nervous you're going to be and actually you'll develop your own style over time that will just help you feel more confident for when the perfect job comes along so don't think coming out of this um you need to really land that perfect perfect job um i think that's a lot of pressure for people to put on themselves especially on the back of the pandemic and um things changing i think you know take the time to spend um you know sit with your family and talk about kind of what it is that really makes you tick what you feel passionate about um and then you can start to really consider where you want to be but i would also say you know just really think about where you want to be um try not to think about where you want to be in five years time or, or ten years time great if you can if you've got that vision and you know specifically that's amazing but equally i think three years is probably realistic at this point um and then kind of work it backwards you know right well where do i want to be in three years what is it that's important to me is it a job that's um you know pays really well do i just want to earn lots of money because i just want to go traveling um, in a few years time that's okay you know um probably don't maybe tell the employer that because actually nothing's definite is it that might be a vision that you've got for yourself but I, I probably wouldn't reveal that at interview stage and that's where you do need to be 
a little bit coy, you know, um, and come up and, and be quite savvy in that approach because ultimately you might be taking it as a bit of a tactical move, a tactical approach. But I would say just, you know, realistically, that that is fine. You know, you, you who knows where we're going to be in sort of five and ten years time. Nobody is really clear on that. I don't think um, at this point, not nobody, but most people at this point in their career. I think you're kind of in your, you know, certainly in that early professional career stage. It's about gaining experience, going somewhere, you know, it might not be right. You might get in your foot in the door somewhere and think, actually, this isn't my forever job. But that's OK. Take what you can from it in that time that you're there and invest, give the business back what's necessary. Be professional, you know, do everything right by um, your managers and what's expected of you. Um, but it's OK to kind of start to think, actually, I feel like maybe in the next three years I want to be here. Um, don't feel that you need to come out of university and bag the perfect job um, is what I would say. So, yeah, um, I think moving on to the next slide. Actually, before we head to the kind of Q&A, um, I was going to talk about the onboarding and hybrid working, which um, I think is really important, um, you know, for I suppose we've not put the emphasis on kind of um, interviews being online as well. So just to conclude on that, you know, some interviews I, I accept are still happening online because of the the world of remote and hybrid working. Um, so all of the techniques that I've just shared today about that kind of preparation absolutely still stands for a video interview. Um, you know, nothing changes there, in my opinion. But what I do think you definitely needs to do as a part of the preparation for those is do a bit of a sound check first, you know, make sure you're familiar with the platform that you're using, whether it be Teams, Zoom, etc. cetera, um, check you can screen share. And um, I know we had some clunkiness around my screen sharing earlier, Anita, but, it, you know, I've been using uh, video interviewing for a long time, but still I go from one platform to another to another and it confuses me as to, gosh, where's the screen share on Teams versus Zoom? Just make sure you know, you know, what platform you're going to be doing that interview on. Consider your backdrop in those interview settings um, on video. Um, believe you me, I've seen some really interesting backdrops in my time and lots of people traffic behind an interview, um, which can be quite distracting. And the only sort of other key thing to remember, I think, for a video interview, it's obviously you know, it's not in person, so it's a bit more two dimensional. And I think you've really got to almost emphasize body language a little bit more in some ways to kind of get that um, just personality across really in that passion um, and still have the same level of eye contact. Um, one thing that is really key is just the dress code as well for any interview. Um, I think if you're, you know, a lot of companies now are certainly um, more casual, business casual, it's always safe to go business wear. Let me tell you, always, always safe. Don't turn up in your trainers. Um, even if that's their style, I would always, you know, put something a bit more formal on. You don't need to go super formal. I don't think anyone's expecting a three piece suit nowadays. Um, I don't think you, you're going to be judged for that. But um, I really think, you know, the more professional you can look, you can't go wrong with that. And again, that applies to video. Um, so, yeah, onboarding, hybrid, remote work here, all these, you know, um, terms now that we're more familiar with in the workplace. Um, and actually, um, I was just going to highlight the, the main differences, really. You'll see a lot of job adverts out there that will state kind of hybrid working. What is hybrid working? Um, hybrid working is generally where the business is operating kind of a couple of days in the office, a couple of days at home. So um, we're a business that are doing hybrid working here. So we tend to have that flexibility around kind of Wednesdays and uh, Wednesdays and Fridays. It's our set day where um, anybody's entitled to work from home, anybody and everybody, which I think is a really great thing. It, it just instills kind of um, sends a message of trust, you know, to our employers and um, 
it's also really helpful, say, on a Friday where individuals have got, you know, trips down south to see family members or um, up north or to the coast. It just means, you know, well, we've got an early finish on a Friday, which is great at three o'clock. You can leave your house and you can be on your way at three. You know, you're not having to kind of fight with getting out of town to get home, to get on to wherever your next destination is. Um, so there's huge benefits to that. But hybrid tends to be where it's kind of a little bit of a mixture um of kind of office based um and home based working and then we've got kind of you know the remote side and there are quite a few um of my friends doing remote working and i know there's a lot of companies that are advertising that remote working um so that is you know you've got to be comfortable i guess with working you know independently um with no real sort of team interaction and i appreciate that may well be fitting for many people um Personally, for me, it's not. I do um, get a bit of fear of missing out. So I like to be in and amongst it in the office. Um, I feel you can get things done a bit more efficient because you can just ask your colleague across the desk. Um, you've got, you know, a bit more camaraderie with chat from whatever you're watching on TV to, um, you know, what you've done at the weekend. So I personally prefer it. But remote working, um, just really consider that. You know, if you're somebody who likes that people contact, it can be quite isolating, um, but then it can be really beneficial because it means, you know, depending on your personal circumstances, you've got maybe more flexibility around, um, you know, you've, you've got a couple of pets great you know you don't have to worry about doggy daycares and stuff or maybe you've got a property abroad you know I've got friends who are now able to kind of spend half the year in Portugal versus the UK that is amazing you know I think that's brilliant um, and it's I'm so glad the world has gone this way but I think you just need to really consider um, what that looks like from a training perspective so if you were to, you've been through, say, the interview process, one or two stages on video, you feel that it's a great organisation for you. Um, I'd really focus on asking questions at that interview around kind of what does that training look like? You know, I think you should be asking that in any interview, um, by the way. But, you know, more importantly, how will I be onboarded and what is expected of me and what would a typical day look like for me? Because it might be that you're having, you know, you're on back to back Zoom meetings all day. Um, so your thoughts around working from home and not having too many interruptions could actually be quite different to the reality of it. Your training um, might be minimal. It may well be that they just sort of say, well, we'll just send you some webinars. Is that really the way you want to learn? Or maybe it is, you know, but I think um, a business that's got, you know, interactive training um, or workshop training is is amazing. Um, but if it is online and it's webinars, you know, do you learn well that way? Is that the way you want to kind of really, you know, start your career? Um, and maybe it is, you know, and, and again, people do work really well that way. But I would just consider kind of what the training program looks like, because some companies might actually not have any training. It might just be like, we'll send you some login details and we'll give you a call every week. Um, and yeah, Julie, sorry to interrupt. I think some of the some of the people can't see you because on their side, they said you're frozen. Oh, OK. From, from just now, I changed my device from a laptop to an iPad so I think we are like well connected but they are some of them are kind of is that just happened yeah yeah just happened just, just happened now. that's strange isn't it Anita and a couple of people I'm not sure if it's something I can is it how still did you it? how did you fix it last time did, did, did they just rejoin did I rejoin I don't know how, how did you fix it last time did you just wait there and then the rest of us rejoin? To be honest, I can probably take the screen share off now and just have my video up because we're at Q&A in a row. Oh, OK. I wonder if that is anything to do with yeah, it. Just message them. Stop presenting. That's got... Is that better? <laughs> Yeah, it's always uh, clear on my side. I'm not sure about other people. Can you guys hear us okay? Uh, you can just like raise your hand or just give us some, um, yeah, give a thumbs up. Yeah. I can definitely hear you.
Am I still frozen? Uh, no. Hi, Natalie. Sorry, I, I, my one was frozen a minute ago. Um, are you no. okay now? I'm sorry, you are, you are, I can see you. Yeah. Shall I carry on? Just oh, finish. sorry, please, yes. Yeah, okay, perfect. No, that's fine. So yeah, onboarding remote, just really consider what that training looks like for you. Um, and yeah, there's nothing worse than kind of accepting a job and, and maybe there just been very little interaction. I think probably, you you know, if it's a business that have really, um, during the pandemic, kind of worked that way and they've had two years experience of this, then you're probably going to be absolutely fine, you know. But if it's a business that, as I say, relatively small and um, they haven't got the infrastructure to help this or the, the platforms or, it, you know, um, it, it could just feel a little bit kind of isolating, I think, and, and you may not get kind of the, the training that you need. So I'd probably just ask questions ahead of your kind of, um, you know, if they offer you the job, what that the first three months looks like and, and what a typical kind of week looks like and how often are you um, having kind of one to ones with your manager? Because I think that's what's going to be really important, isn't it? You don't want to be kind of left to your own devices from home in a new job with no expectation set of you. Um, you really are going to want those clear objectives because then you know each week, right, OK, this is what I want to achieve. And on Friday, I can, you know, I've got a call with my manager to update them on this. Um, if they don't have the answer um, for you, then I'd probably consider, you know, why why not? Because if that's the case, then it could be that it's a, a business that is literally, you know, here's your routine task. This is what we need you to do. And, and we'll just check in every so often. Um, I'm not sure that's always going to get the best out of people. So I would put it back on them a little bit because I don't think everybody's great in the remote working world. You have to remember, even for the biggest businesses in the world to the smaller companies, it's it's relatively new to everybody. But some people just, you know, got to grips with it quickly and managed to adapt and adjust real quick. Um, we've got quite a few people here that do choose to work from home, actually, pretty much full time. But the expectation is that, you know, when we're doing um, any training and workshops, um, often they'll ask to log in online. And so we wouldn't call it remote working, um, to be honest. We still refer to it as hybrid working um, because remote is generally where you can be based anywhere in the UK and it doesn't matter where the head office is. We wouldn't employ anybody based in the UK because actually the expectation we know as a business is once a month we do an end of month presentation. Once um, every couple of weeks I deliver training to the, the business and, and everybody's welcome on that training. But of course, when I'm asked, can you do it online as well? Actually, it's not always, cap it's just quite clunky for me to deliver a training session, interacting with a group of individuals in the, the boardroom, um, as well as talking to people online at the same time. It, as a trainer, it's really hard to do. And I, I'd much prefer that those individuals come in to do that. So there is an expectation um, that, you know, we do when we do require you in, um, you need to be able to get here. And that could be, you know, a day's notice just because it, there might be something pressing that comes up at the business. So I would just check, you know, what remote actually means as well um, ahead of, you know, you engaging in that opportunity. Um, and also when you're applying for jobs, I get a lot of people applying and asking me, is there an opportunity for this to be remote? I do understand why that is, but I really do set it out in our adverts. So most companies will specify whether it's kind of office based hybrid um, or remote. I think some companies there is an expectation that you are in um, full time all of the time. And I don't see that there's anything wrong with that you know depending on what the reasons for that are because you know it's a you know a company that it just requires that or that's just their expectation as a business it's understanding why that is the case um because i think most companies it gives you a good indication of the trust that they have in the people and that they're you know encouraging this autonomy um an accountability piece i think it's quite telling if they're doing hybrid i think it's it's the future it's what people want ultimately and I'd say that's probably more appealing um, because it's you've got that flexibility. But yeah, just it's checking ahead of any applications. Uh, what that looks like is what I would say. And 
yeah, I think that's probably brought me to uh, questions, if there are any. Is there any questions for Natalie? Or... Oh. Right, so um, perhaps um, I mean, thank you so much, Natalie, because it's like your information is so detailed, you know, as a career service cyber, it's basically you cover every single thing. Um, so the last bit is that because we kind of like a run over the events as well a little bit. So people, some people might be start leaving for another commitment. And um, yeah. just wondering, are you, do you mind to put your LinkedIn contact um, in the chat just for the, because sometimes the students just would like to contact you directly yeah. if that's all right. Or? Yeah, of course. Um, what did you say? My LinkedIn? This, yeah. Yeah, um, absolutely. I'll just have to... Do you want me to do that now? Uh, or, or would you like me to? I think I've got it in here. Mm, I've got your LinkedIn page. Do you mind if I put it on the chat so people can find you? Yeah, or? Okay, that's fine. And I was going to sort of tell anybody about the graduate opportunity as well that we've got here. So I can I can certainly do that. Yes. And, and also the uh, last but not the least is you mentioned earlier that you've got a CV template that you're happy to yeah. share with uh, students right yeah and um, so what is the best way to kind of get it collect would you like me as a main contact person that if they're interested they kind of come to me and then I come to you or or you're happy to have your more personal con I mean like a business yeah. contact I'm more than happy to have direct um contact like I say we've got um two graduate opportunity well we've got four graduate opportunities actually in total here at the moment mm -hmm. um, so you know one of them is the marketing opportunity um so that's you know requiring a marketing related degree yes and we've got our other opportunity which is our executive search consultant so recruitment consultants um, mm -hmm. and 12 month training program so anybody that wants to get in touch about that or the cvs i can tell you more about those two opportunities if anybody wants to hear about it while we're logged on but come to me directly it's probably easier because i can I'm happy to offer any advice that's required outside of today. Excellent. So that means that if the student kind of approach me or I can put some notes out, right? So if they're interested, you are happy for me to give your email address yeah, to them? Please. Oh, yeah. excellent. Right, excellent. Yeah, yeah, that that is perfect. So um, I'm just in the chat, just put how people can contact me. So and then, you know, then they can be if they're interested, then I can just like to let them know. Yes. Yeah about your, you know, how to contact you yeah. directly. Please, anything you want to, you can um, pop my number in there, email address, LinkedIn, any form of communication, because I appreciate there might be some questions after today, that's fine. Yes, yes. Uh, CV, it's like, I, can, I can send you the CV template as well, Anita. Oh, that'd be, that'd be that. wonderful, that'd be excellent, yeah. Because I would like to know it myself. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's always useful. I think everyone yes. in my family's got the same template. <laughs> yeah, it's so useful. It's so yeah. useful. Yeah. So um just to have a last check that is has anybody got more questions for Natalie before uh, we end the event for today? Probably not. Right. So that's great. So thank you everybody for joining us this well, it's afternoon now. So sorry, a bit of a kind of a technical issue that everybody kind of frozen a little bit. I have to in and out and so is myself, but everything it is perfect now so thank you so much for everybody joining and so special thank you for natalie's giving us such a good insight information and so details with you're talking about the star technique which is what we are using as well yeah, oh, and good. yeah that is brilliant so when you say the start i was just mm, yes 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 that is excellent so um right enjoy the afternoon everybody so uh, i probably put the um, natalie's link in chats there and also when i send a follow-up email so i will put more natalie's uh, kind of contact details there as well so in case you would like to contact natalie for more further information yeah right yeah. then thank you everybody and yeah just remember that we've got the graduate academy starting on the 30th of august which um you know we're going to take on sort of three to four graduates doesn't matter what background or degree you've come from it's a lot about kind of relationship building um and we have got a 12 12 month training program that we're offering with that so yes great yeah. learning potential and brilliant rewards that we offer as a business so 
Excellent. So thank you very much, everybody. So enjoy your afternoon. It is still sunny at the moment in my side. So right then. Thank you, everybody. Bye, bye thank for you. now. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.